Hello, welcome to lecture 25 of Eric Ench 2 CI5. Uh, we'll discuss in this lecture the concept of an impedance and uh, we'll, I will show you how to calculate the impedance of a resistor, inductor and the capacitor and uh, I will relate to the... we did actually have the discussion about impedance earlier um, when I, I showed you that the same result we obtain from solving the differential equation can be obtained by using um, uh, approach very similar to the one that we use for resistors but by defining complex complex I called at the time complex resistances for the uh, capacitors and the inductors so I'm going to put formal definition of this in this lecture and uh, I will show you how to make these calculations and how to use them to analyze uh, AC circuits so let's first talk about resistors so we have here a resistor and you connect to it a voltage source, it's sinusoidal. This is the expression of voltage source. It has an amplitude of AV, a phase of theta V. Then if you want to get the current, the current flowing in this circuit is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. This is still applies even at, at AC signals. So if you divide this one by R, you see you get another signal whose amplitude is AV over R. So this is a sinusoidal signal, sinusoidal waveform whose amplitude is AV over R, which we call it AI. So this is the amplitude of the current. And the phase of the current is still the same phase as the voltage because we did not change the phase. It's still AI cosine omega T plus theta V, and theta V is equal to theta I. So we can take this, we can take the current expression, we can write the phasor for it, the phasor of this waveform, which is a current waveform, is AI e to the g theta i. The phasor of this voltage waveform is this one here. So this is the amplitude, and this is the angle or the phase. So this AV e to the g theta v. Both theta i and theta v are equal to one another, but AI is equal to AV divided by R. So we say in this case that the phasor of the voltage is equal to the phase of the current multiplying by R, which is the impedance of the resistance. Okay, notice when you multiply a complex number by a real number, you are only changing its magnitude, but the phase stays the same. So the angle, the angle of, th of V tilde, which is the phase of the voltage, and the angle of I tilde are the same, but the magnitude of V tilde is equal to the magnitude of I tilde multiplying R. So this is very similar to what we have for the DC case and um, this is very important to remember that the that voltage and the current will still remain in phase. They only change, the, only we get an amplitude change for the two phasors. So this is how we relate the two phasors and this is very similar to Ohm's law. V is equal to IR but now we see the phasor of the voltage is equal to the phasor of the current multiplying R. Let's take a look at one example. We have a current source. It's injecting current into a resistor of value 10 ohm. This is the value of the current source. This is the phasor. It's a waveform, cosine waveform, whose amplitude is 3 and whose phase or angle is 30 degrees. The frequency is 60 Hz. We are going to need that to determine the exact waveform. We would like to, to find the phasor of the voltage, so the phasor of this voltage, the current waveform and the voltage waveform. So we follow the same steps that we mentioned earlier. Um, we treat this in the same way we wrote Ohm's law. V is equal to IR. But here we say that the phasor of the, of the voltage is equal to the phasor of the current multiplying R. The phasor of the current is given. It is 3 angle 30. And the resistance is given is 10 ohm. So when you multiply these two, 3 by 10 will give you 30. And the angle of this, uh, the angle stays the same as we said because both V tilde and I tilde, the phasor of the voltage phasor current will still have the same angle because R is a, is a real number and the real number have an angle of zero. So this is a voltage. If you want to write in the time domain, you will need omega. So omega is equal to 2 by F. So F is 60 hertz. So this will give you 120 by radian per second. So the current waveform is equal to the real of the phasor e to the g omega t. This is the expression we use to convert from phasors to time domain. This is the phasor of the current that which was given to us. It is 3 
angle 30 so 3 e to the g 30 degrees multiplied by e to the g omega t e to the g 120 pi t you combine these two complex things and you take the real part e to the g theta becomes cosine theta so this is the expression for the current in amperes for the voltage do exactly the same you say the voltage wave forms equal to the real of the phasor e to the g omega t this is a phasor 30 angle 30 so this is the only difference will be in the magnitude so i can i simply put the answer here so this is 30 angle 30 this means the corresponding waveform is 30 cosine 120 pi t plus 30 degrees notice that the current and the voltage have the same frequency okay and they are both in phase because this is this is angle this is angle 30 and the other one is angle 30 as well so um, so um, so you can see this is 30 degrees and this one is also 30 degrees okay um, but the only difference between them is in the magnitude the amplitude this is three three amperes and this one is 30 volts we can plot the relationship between the two phasors in two domains first in the time domain so if I plot them this is time t uh, remember that the current was uh, 3 angle 30 so the cosine is shifted in the negative time by 30 degrees so this shift here 30 degrees so this is a current the voltage will be exactly in phase with current they go to zero together they reach the peak together but with a different amplitude and it should be clear that i'm drawing i'm drawing each one of them in its own scale if you want to do this in the phasor domain this is how they look like this is a current phasor it's a phasor we agreed it's a vector it's a point in the complex domain so this one is a is a in the this is a current three amperes angle 30 the corresponding voltage is this one it's 30 angle 30 i'm drawing each one of them it's on a scale so uh even though this 30 looks shorter but it doesn't matter but i want you to know that they, they are both in phase both have the same angle with the real axis this one has an amplitude of 30 volts this one here has an amplitude of 3 amperes okay but they are in phase and uh, and in time they look like two waveforms on top of one another they go to zero together they reach the peak together so the resistor does not introduce a phase shift it just changes the amplitude and this is the relationship v tilde equal i tilde r is steady now we move to discuss the same case for inductors how to drive a phase relationship between the uh, the voltage and the current of, the, of an inductor so here what we have we have a current source it's injecting current in an inductor so it is going to create a voltage drop across it this current source is sinusoidal it's given by this expression i naught cosine omega t plus theta naught so as a phasor it is it has an amplitude of i naught a modulus of i naught it has a phase or an angle of theta naught okay so we can write it this way or as we explained in class we can write it as i naught e to the g theta naught now we know that the voltage and the current in the inductor are related by this expression the voltage is the derivative of the current multiplied by the inductance so if i take this cosine and differentiate it i'm going to get a negative sign multiplying with omega and this is exactly what i have here but remember that a negative sign is is actually a cosine that was shifted in the negative time by pi over 2 so i can absorb this negative sign into the sign and then add and convert the whole thing into a cosine that was shifted by pi over 2 it's very important to understand this step a minus sign if you draw a minus sign minus sine waveform you will see it's a cosine waveform that was shifted in the negative time by pi over 2 so this is why I absorbed it. I took this negative sign and I wrote as a cosine of the same angle, but it was shifted by pi over 2. Plus pi over 2 means shift in the negative time by pi over 2. So you can see now, this is a, this is a voltage waveform. It's still sinusoidal, but its amplitude has been changed. And it has been changed by a quantity that's dependent on frequency, because you have omega here. And its phase has been changed as well. So if you put this one in a phasor, phasor form, you get this is the modulus of the phasor, and this is the angle of the this is this one here is the angle of the phasor. It is the original phase of the voltage plus pi over two. Okay, 
So we can simply write it a little bit more formal way. e to the j pi over 2 will give us j. This is one of the identities you should be fluent in. Because e to the j pi over 2 is cosine pi over 2, which is, which is 0, plus j sine pi over 2, which is j. So e to the j pi over 2 is going to give me j. And uh, omega is still the same. And this is e to the j theta naught. This is, this is the current phase we started with. And this is a voltage phasor. So this is what is telling us. The voltage phasor and the current phasor are related to one another through some factor. This is J omega L. We call this one the impedance of an inductor. And usually give it the symbol ZL. This is J omega L. This is the impedance of an inductor. And you can see it's frequency dependence. The frequency dependence. So the higher the frequency, the higher the impedance of the inductor. Okay. Um, so what is this relationship is saying is that if you have a sinusoidal waveform, the current is sinusoidal, then the voltage will also be sinusoidal. But its magnitude or its amplitude will be equal to the amplitude of the current multiplied by, the, by omega L. And its phase, the phase of the voltage, will be the phase of the current plus pi over 2. Because this J represents a phase shift to pi over 2. This J is e to the J pi over 2. So this is what we call the impedance of an inductor, and if you take the inverse of this one, if you take 1 over g omega l, this defines something called the admittance of an inductor. But really we use most of the time impedances. So the impedance of an inductor, zl, is j omega l. So this looks exactly like Ohm's law. V is equal to ir, but r here is not real. r is imaginary, because we introduce not only change in the amplitude, but we also change the phase. And the phase phase change is given by J. So here we know that the voltage leads the current by pi over 2. Because this J means you add to the phase of the current pi over 2. Okay, let's have one example. We have here a circuit. We have a voltage source. Uh, it's inject injecting current in an inductor. This is the expression for the voltage source. The frequency is 60 Hz. We'd like to get the current phasor. We'd like to get the voltage and current in time. We'd like to plot them in the time domain and in the phasor domain. Phasor domain is a complex domain, the real and the imaginary axis. So, we know of the voltage, we can get the current. We simply have to find the corresponding impedance of an inductor, which is J omega L, and then divide V by Z, and we're going to get the current. This is exactly like the same way we use Ohm's law. I is equal to V over R. This is how we did for resistors. Here, I, I tilde, the phase of the current is equal to V tilde divided by ZL. So this is going to be exactly the same thing. So the calculations are pretty straightforward. First, you have to find omega. Omega is equal to 2 by F. This is angular frequency. F is 50 hertz, so this will give us 100 pi radian per second. The impedance of an inductor at any frequency is frequency dependent. It's G omega L. So it is J100 by multiplying 2. This will give us J200 by ohms. So this means it, it induces a phase shift of, of 90 degrees and it changes the amplitude by 200 by. So in the same way we do Ohm's law. I is equal to V divided by R. In he, here, the phasor of the current, the phasor, it's complex. The phasor of the current is equal to the phasor of the voltage divided by the impedance of the inductor. And this is what we have here. The phase of the voltage is 10 angle 60. The, phase, the, the impedance of the inductor, which now represents the equivalent of a resistance for, for resistors, is J200 by. We calculated that earlier. Remember this J. This J represents an angle of 90 degrees. So when you divide two complex numbers, you divide the moduli and you subtract 60 minus 90, the angle of the numerator minus the angle of the denominator. So 10 over 200 by will give us 15.9 milliampere, and 60 minus 90 will give us an angle of minus 30. So now this is the phasor of the current. Once I know the phasor of the current, I know the current itself, because the phasor gives me the amplitude, 15.9 milliampere, and gives me the phase, which is minus 30. So I can take everything to the time domain. And the phasor of the voltage is given is 10 angle 60. So this is a cosine whose amplitude is 10 and whose phase is 60. So it's 10. And of course, I can use this expression. The voltage is equal to real, the phasor e to the g omega t. Uh, this is 10 angle 60, so 10 e to the g 60. You multiply by e to the g omega t, and remember, omega here is 100 pi. And then you combine these two together, you take the real part. This e to the g theta will give you cosine theta. 
and once you have done this this will be the expression for the voltage now for the current we already got the phase of the current it's 15.9 milliampere angle minus 30 so it's a cosine wave form whose amplitude is 15.9 milliampere and whose phase is minus 30 so i can write it this way and you can see it has the same frequency as the voltage because linear circuits do not change frequency now we can plot them together in the time domain and in the phasor domain this is the voltage that was given to us it is 10 cosine 100 by t plus 60 so it is shifted in the negative time by 60 degrees so it's a cosine but starts from here okay while the current is a cosine that was shifted in the positive time by 30 so you can see this is a cosine this is the start of this is the peak of the cosine it was shifted from here to here so it was moved in the positive time by 30 so you can see something very interesting when the voltage is maximum in the inductor the current is zero and when the current is maximum the voltage is zero because they are 90 degrees out of phase okay and of course we can tell here that the voltage leads why the voltage leads because if the peak is here for the voltage while the peak is here for the current so the peak of the voltage appears earlier so there is a phase shift of 90 degrees between the voltage and current as expected and as we mentioned several times before the voltage across the inductor leads by 90 degrees as a phasor diagram this is the the phasor is a, a phasor is a complex number so as we agreed it represents a point and we can draw it as an arrow from the origin the voltage here is 10 angle 60 so this is the voltage here see it makes an angle 60 with the rail axis so this is how it looks like like a complex number it's, it has a magnitude of 10 it has an angle of 60 the current we calculated is 15.9 milliampere with an angle of minus 30 so you can see I calculated minus 30 here for on the, in the clockwise direction so this is the length and so on the angle between them is 90 degrees and the voltage appears earlier than the current the voltage has a higher angle than the current so it leads the current the last relationship we have to drive is for capacitors what's going to happen for a voltage and current in a capacitor we follow exactly the same procedure this is if we assume that we have a voltage source connect, connected across a capacitor and this is a sinusoidal voltage source it's going to create a sinusoidal current in the capacitor this is the expression for the sinusoidal voltage source amplitude av and and the angle theta v i can write this as a phasor as av angle theta v or av e to the g theta v both forms are equivalent now what is the relationship between the current and the voltage across the capacitor the current is the derivative of the voltage multiplied by the capacitance so if you differentiate this one relative to v it relative to t the derivative of the cosine will give you minus sine and you have an omega here okay of course the derivative cosine omega t plus theta v will give you minus omega sine omega t plus theta v this is what we have here okay this minus minus sine minus sine if you draw a minus sign you'll see it's a cosine that was shifted in the negative time direction by pi over 2 so you add you absorb this inside and it becomes a cosine but with a shift 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 to pi over 2 remember when i say shifted in the negative time then the phase the angle shift is positive okay so i so this is av still there c still there omega still there but i absorb this negative sign and i wrote this as a cosine so this is now how the current looks like its amplitude was changed by omega c and its phase was changed by pi over 2 okay and i can get the phase of this one i can write it as omega c multiplying av e to the g multiplying the angle remember the phase does not have an omega t part we just focus on the angle or what we call the phase it, so this is the corresponding phase I can write e to g by over 2 as j, okay? And uh, I, I combine this one and this one to give me the original voltage phasor. This is the one that we started with, okay? So what I, what I wrote here in this expression is that the current phasor is equal to the voltage phasor multiplied by g omega c. So, and this is, this is very similar to what we have for Ohm's law. So this is the expression that we have here. I tilde is equal to g omega c v tilde. So uh, I is equal to the conductance multiplying by the voltage. This is what we used to have for resistances. Here I is equal to the admittance, admittance multiplying by the voltage. 
okay so the admittance of a capacitor is called is j omega c and if you want to get the resistance you have to divide v over i because this is the differential of an impedance the impedance v tilde over i tilde will give you one over j omega c so what's happening here and this is a relationship that all electrical engineers know by heart that if you apply if you have a sinusoidal uh, source connected to a capacitor then the phase of the current and the phase of the voltage are related by this relationship the phase of the of the of the voltage will be equal to the impedance of the capacitor multiplied by the phase of the current what's the impedance of the capacitor it's 1 over j omega c remember for inductor this was j omega l okay so the magnitude of the current will be divided by omega c to give me the magnitude of the phase of the voltage and I have to subtract 90 degrees from the phase here because 1 over j will give me minus j and minus j is a phase shift of minus pi over 2 so I know that the phase of the voltage is equal to the phase of the current minus pi over 2 so here the current leads the current is the one that's ahead of the voltage because you subtract it from its phase pi over 2 so this means that the voltage lags behind the current so to summarize when we deal with phasors and capacitors and the AC signals the relationship V tilde is equal to ZC I tilde. ZC is the impedance of the capacitor is 1 over J omega C. It's frequency dependent. So the higher the frequency, the lower the impedance. And at infinity, the capacitor represents short circuit. A short circuit even if, even if there is, uh, it's, not, it's not DC or anything like that, but because 1 over J omega C will be 0. Omega is infinite, so this becomes 0, okay? So, uh, I'll show you now an example how to use this, how to apply it for analyzing capacitor circuits. This is a very simple illustrative example. We have a capacitor, we inject a current I through it. This current is sinusoidal. It has an amplitude of 0.1. It has a phase of 120 degrees. The frequency is 10 kilohertz. Of course, we can apply uh, Ohm's law in the same way we do it. We can get the voltage. We can see the voltage is equal to I. The phase of the current, the phase of the current multiplied by the impedance of the capacitance. We don't talk about resistances anymore, we talk about impedances. Because these impedances are the, are the thing that relates phasors, one phasor to the other. We can get V tilde, we can uh, take the, all the phasors to the time domain, we can blot them in the time domain, we can blot them with the frequency domain as well. Okay, so let's see how this is going to go. I know this current phasor. Okay, I need to get the impedance of the capacitor. The impedance of the capacitor, Zc, is 1 over g omega c. But the frequency is 10 kilohertz. Then omega is equal to 2 by multiplying f. So it's 2 by multiplied by 10 kilohertz, which is 10 to the power 4. This is here the capacitance. It's 100 microfarad. So it's 110 to the minus 6. So it's 10 to the minus 4. This will cancel this one. This will give me 1 over g 2 pi. So this will give me minus j. Remember, 1 over j is minus j. 1 over j is minus j. So give me minus j, 0.159 ohms. Now, if you want to get the impedance of the capacitor voltage, it's equal to the, uh, if you want, sorry, if you get the phasor, if you want to get the phasor of the capacitor voltage, Vc tilde, then Vc tilde is equal to the phasor of the capacitor current multiplied by the impedance of the capacitor. This is given. This is 0 0.1 angle 120 degrees. You multiply it by this number. Okay? Minus J, minus J is e to the minus J, e to the minus J pi over 2. So whenever you multiply by minus J, this means you subtract from the phase pi over 2. So I'm going to absorb this one here into 120 degrees to give me 30 degrees. 0 0.1 will multiply 0 0.159 to give me 0 0.0159. And this really 15.9 millivolts. So it's very important to understand what I did. This minus j is nothing but e to the minus j pi over 2. e to the minus j pi over 2. So it's equivalent to a phase shift of minus pi over 2. So when you multiply two complex numbers, you add the phases. So the phase of this one is minus pi over 2. I add it to 120 degrees. I get 30 degrees. Okay, so now I can I can write them both in the time domain. I don't have to worry about it that much. I'm not gonna write uh, real i tilde e to the g omega t. I should be able now to do it in a more faster way. This is the amplitude of the current. This is the, the angle of the current. So this is point one 
cosine omega t plus 120 degrees, where omega is 2 by 10 to the power 4. So this is how I wrote uh, the, the current. The voltage is written exactly the same way. I can write the voltage at, you know, the amplitude is 15.9 millivolt. The phase is 30 degrees. So it's 15.9 cosine uh, 2 by 10 to the power 4 t plus 30 degrees as shown here in this expression. Okay, so this is exactly the same thing that we have for the current. If you want to plot them both in the phasor domain, well, this is the current. It's it's a phasor. It has an angle of 120 degrees, and this this we know the amplitude, the magnitude of this one. This was also given. We calculated the voltage. We found that the voltage has an angle of 30 degrees, and we know its magnitude. I believe 15.9 millivolt. I'm not drawing them the same scale, and that just to be consistent. I think the voltage should be drawn in a, in a red color because I always draw the, the new thing that I calculate with a red color. Okay, so uh, we have done that and uh, this is how they look like in the phasor domain and if you take a careful look you'll see that the angle between them must be 90 degrees. This angle is 90 degrees because for a capacitor the current leads and it leads by 90 degrees. If you want to plot this in the time domain you do exactly the same thing. The current has an angle of 120 degrees, so it's a cosine that was shifted in the negative time by 120 degrees. And the, the voltage is a cosine that was shifted in the negative time by 30 degrees. So you can see this shift here, 30 degrees. So you can see when the current, the voltage, the, the current is zero, the voltage is maximum. And the, when, the current is, when the voltage is zero, the current is maximum, and so on. Because you have a by over two phase shift between them. So to summarize, we have in AC three types of components: resistors, inductors, and capacitors. For a resistor, this is a phase relationship. V tilde is equal to R I tilde. R is purely real, so it does not change the phase. It only changes the magnitude. So this means, and and this, so I can write the say this is an impedance of a magnitude of r and an angle of zero. For an inductor, we write expression very similar to Ohm's law. V, V is equal to IR, but here we don't call it resistance, we call it impedance. So the impedance of an inductor is J omega L. J omega L, this is a, a, a complex number whose magnitude is omega L and whose phase is 90 degrees, because J is e to the J by over two. So just remember the impedance of an inductor is J omega L, it's an omega L angle 90 degrees, okay? So this is very similar to Ohm's law. Still, V is equal to IR, but here everything is complex, okay? Now for a capacitor, we have the same thing. V, the phase of the voltage, the phase of the current are, relating by the, are related by the impedance of a capacitor, ZC. ZC here is 1 over G omega C. So it has a magnitude of 1 over omega C, and 1 over g gives you minus g, and minus g is a phase of minus pi over 2, because minus g is e to the minus g pi over 2, so this means that the capacitor impedance is 1 over omega c angle minus 90. Impedances, because we this all these laws are similar to Ohm's law, so everything that we learned in circuits so far still applies. We can put impedances in parallel, we can put them in series, in the same way we did for resistances. The only difference is that all the calculations are done as complex numbers. Okay? Because you can see the basic law is the same. It is V equal to I multiplying some constant. But the constant for in the resistive case was purely real. Here it can be a complex number. So it adds a phase shift. And I have a word of warning. I don't want anyone to say that this is a real signal multiplying a real signal. This is a phasor multiplying a phasor. These are two complex numbers and they are related to each other by a complex number. If you want to take this one to the time domain, you have to multiply by e to the g omega t and then you take the real part. So, as I said earlier, because the same law and the same uh, Ohm's law pretty much applies here, it is the same form, V is equal to something multiplying the current. We see that we can add resistances and impedances in the same way we did for resistances. So we have a number of impedances in series. The total impedance would be Z1 plus Z2 up to Zn. So we can get the total impedance. It will have a real part. We call it the resistive part of the impedance. It will have an imaginary part. We call this one the reactive part of the impedance. 
both have have units of ohms and they can both be functional frequency they change with frequency okay and this is how we can build all types of filters that allows us to allow one frequency band to be transmitted while blocking another frequency band because we can build circuits that are frequency selective okay so for one circuit you can have r for one frequency r can be very large for another frequency r can be very small and so once you have found the total impedance of a circuit so this total impedance can be written as a modulus and an angle this is how we write phasors or it can be written at modulus z e to the j theta z then the current is equal to the phasor the phasor of the current is equal to the phasor of the voltage divided by this impedance so this one has a magnitude vm and an angle of theta v this one has a magnitude z and angle of theta z when you divide two complex numbers you divide the two moduli and you subtract the angles okay so um so so what is happening here you can get the magnitude of the current it is vm of modulus z and you can you know the angle of the current which is theta v minus theta z so impedances change both the amplitude and the phase in general and the amplitude and the angle of sinusoidal waveforms i have a word of warning everything i discussed so far talks about sinusoidal signals so don't lose track of this ac analysis is applies only when you have one frequency in your circuit so you assume your source has a frequency omega then all the voltages and currents have the same frequency you are just trying to see what will be the amplitude and the phase of each one of them because the only different amplitude and phase okay let's say, take a look at one example here uh, we have a circuit uh, this is a uh, uh, resistor in series with a capacitor in battle with another resistor in series with an inductor the frequency is 60 hertz this one here is 10 angle 0 so it's 10 cosine omega t and the omega is 2 by multiplying 60 hertz so we'd like to calculate the input impedance the way we do it exactly the same way the way we would have done it with resistances and have resistance in series with this resistance resistance so you would have said that these two are in series and this series combination is in parallel with this one and then once i found this equivalent resistance i would say it's in series with this resistance correct but now they are not resistances they are impedances so you have to get the impedance of the capacitor added to the impedance of this resistor which is going to be 2 ohm it's purely real and then once i found this total impedance i'm going to put it in parallel with another impedance of 1 ohm and once I've found this total impedance, the three of them, combining the three of them, I'm going to put it in series with the impedance of the inductor, which is G omega L. So I have to first to calculate G omega L, I have to calculate 1 over G omega C, the impedance of the capacitor and the impedance of the inductor. So the calculations will require extensive, <laughs> unfortunately extensive complex number calculations. First, the impedance of the capacitor. This is 10 microfarad. It's impedance is 1 over g omega c 1 over g multiplying 2 pi frequency 60 hertz and this 10 microns so it's 10 to the minus 5 this goes to the numerator as 10 to the power 5 g goes to the numerator as minus j and this becomes 1 over 2 by multiplying 60 10 to the power 5 if you do that this is what you end up having it is minus g 265.25 ohm so you can see the impedance of the capacitor is going to change the amplitude of the voltage and will change its phase as well because this minus j is a phase shift of minus pi over 2 now i found this impedance but these two are in series the same the same ac current is going through them so these two will be added together so the total impedance here is 2 of this branch is 2 plus zc and this is what i do here i call this one z1 i call this one z1 so this one is 2 plus zc this is purely real this is purely imaginary then you combine them together you obtain this number now the impedance of this branch is in parallel with the impedance of this branch this is one ohm and this one here is 2 minus g 265.25 then the, we apply the law of parallel, parallel resistances because everything is still the same as in resistance everything is in a complex as a complex number so you have one multiplying two minus g to 165.25 over 1 plus 2 minus g 265.25 okay then you divide these two complex numbers using the techniques of division you can use polar form or can use cartesian form once i have that done that i now know what is z2 z2 is the barrel is the combination of all three impedances here 
So, I have now Z2, it is given by this thing here. Of course, you can go ahead and do complex division, but I, I noticed that this imaginary part is way bigger than 2, and this imaginary part is way bigger than 3. So, this division, this is negligible relative to this one. So, this is approximately, I didn't really have to worry about the DT. Of course, you can, you can do it exactly, you can multiply by the conjugate to the denominator, uh, or you can convert them both to polar form and do the division, and I advise you to do so. But the number will be very close to 1. Why very close to 1? Because this effectively minus g to 165.25 divided over minus g to 165.25. This is negligible relative to this one. The answer is 1 ohm. So all these three resistances effectively represent an impedance. And they are not three resistances, they are impedances. All these combi all this combination here, th these three impedances, effectively looking from the, from, the, uh, from the other side. So looking from here. ZZ2 represents only one impedance of 1 ohm, which is very interesting, okay? So now, uh, this 1 ohm, this barrel combination here, will be in series with the inductor. But the inductor has an impedance of G omega L. Then I'm going to say the total input impedance, which is your, you see here from the source side, this is what I call ZN, is in the same way we did for resistances, it is G omega L in series with Z2. So this is what I wrote, G omega L is equal to J 2 by multiplying frequency, this is omega, and the L is 10 milli Henry, so it's 10 multiplying 10 to the minus 3, so it's 10 to the minus 2. And then I add 1 to that, so this is the total input impedance. Now, the current drawn from the source, if you want to calculate the current that's drawn from the source, the phasor of this current, I can, okay, let me, let me backtrack here. I can simply replace the whole circuit now by only one, one impedance which which is called Zn okay and it's connected to the source and this is the current flowing in the circuit this I tilde and this V tilde okay so as we learned uh, I can simply say that the current the phase of the current flowing in is equal to the phase of the voltage divided by Zn so I can simply say the current is equal to 10 angle 0 divided by this total input impedance. This is exactly what we did when we have purely resistive circuits, but now everything is a complex number. And we have taken into account the way we divide and multiply complex numbers. Okay, so the last step to calculate the current, the current is equal to the, the phasor of the current is equal to the phasor of the voltage divided by the total input impedance. This is 10 angle zero, this is the one we calculated here. When you divide two complex numbers, you can do the division in the uh, using the multiply by the conjugate denominator, or you can simply convert both quantities into real into uh, into their polar form. And this is what I did here. This is 10 angle zero. This is the modulus. This is the angle. I got the modulus of this one, which is square root of this this squared plus one squared. If you do that, you get 3.89, and the angle. Of the denominator, it's the inverse tangent of 3.7699 divided by 1. This will give you 75.4 degrees. So when you divide two complex numbers, you divide the two moduli and you subtract the angle. So this will give you 10 over 3.89, give you 2.57. You get 0 minus 75.4, you get minus 75.4. So this is a current that's drawn. It's a cosine wave form whose, magne whose amplitude is 2.57 and whose phase is minus 75.4 degrees. So I can draw this one in time, I can draw it even in the phasor domain. Okay, one word of warning um, uh, is that when you, I, I, if you are not sure how I made this calculation, stop the video and go to your calculator, get the modulus of this complex number, you must get this number, and get the angle, the inverse tangent of the imaginary over the real. Don't overlook these calculations, you have to do them yourself so that you are confident in the way you can, especially when you calculate the angles, you can get them because I, the way I explained the lectures, the calculator can give you a wrong answer that's shifted by pi. So you have to uh, calibrate that to get the correct answer for your impedances. Okay, let's take a look at one last example. We have a, a circuit, and you can we can really see in this in this in for this case very complicated circuits with many with many impedances. Here, they don't tell me what is the frequency. You just tell me that the impedance of this inductor is J1. So this is J omega L. So they already did the calculations for us. And they multiplied omega by L, and it told us omega L is 1 ohm. They don't tell me what is the value of the capacitor, but they tell me it represents the impedance of minus JC. 
So 1 over g omega c, which is minus g over omega c, is equal to minus g1. So this means that 1 over omega c here is equal to 1. And the same thing is happening here. So this is another way of showing AC circuits. The, sometimes we can tell you, we don't give you the frequency, we don't need, you don't need really to know the frequency, because I'm doing everything in the time domain, unless I have to take it back to the, uh, I'm doing everything in the frequency domain, I'm doing it in the phasor domain, unless I have to go back and then calculate the uh, I of T and V of T, okay? Uh, so let's see, and uh, so if to calculate the time domain quantities, you need the frequency, uh, and we can, we can mention that. So, for example, like this one, if, you, if the frequency is not given, just write it as omega. So, uh, just write it as a simple omega, and the omega is 2 by f. But in this circuit, we are not being told anything about the frequency. Everything is just put as a complex number. And at the end, after I finish all my phasors, I'm going to write the frequency as omega, the angular frequency as omega, as a symbol. I, unless I tell you the frequency is 60 hertz, then you are going to say, okay, omega is equal to 2 by multiplying 60, and then I can write the time domain quantities. But everything is given here is sufficient to do to give me only phasors, to, def to, to uniquely define the phasors. So, if you take a look at this circuit, you will see the following, that this impedance is in series with this impedance, so you have to combine these two together, and these two, because this is one node, these two are in parallel with the 2 ohm. And now, I'm going to combine these two here, this will give me one impedance, I will combine these two here, this will give me one impedance, and this impedance and this impedance, they are both in parallel, because this is one note. Okay, so I'm going to combine this, this parallel combination and this parallel combination, and I obtain 6 ohm in series 1 impedance in series with another impedance. So there are going to be 6 ohm and 2 other impedances in series. So let's do the calculations. First, um, I have 1 plus J1. This will give me the impedance of this branch, which I called it Z1. So Z1 is 1 plus G, J1 here. I'm missing 1 here in this expression. So I'm going to put 1 here, J1 ohm. Okay, I can simply write as J, or J, J, and J is understood as J1, but I, I, let's put 1 here just to be consistent. Um, Z2 is this impedance. You have four ohm, uh, an uh, impedance of 4 ohm in series with an inductance of J2, impedance of J2 then the total impedance is 4 plus J2. So this is Z2. We can get Z3. This is a capacitor in series with inductor. Remember, a capacitor will give you an, an impedance which is purely imaginary but with negative imaginary part. Then inductor, because it's J omega L, will give you an impedance which is purely imaginary but with positive imaginary part. Here, this is 2. So when you combine J2 and minus G1, you get G1. Okay, this is what I did, and this is what I call this combination here, Z3. So, uh, the, so we, I'm going to now, this is how the circuit looks like, this 1 plus J1. I, I usually draw composite impedances as a block like this. So this one here has resistances and inductances in series, or, is it, or inductances and capacitance in series. This is called an impedance. We can draw it that way as well. So here you can see we have two in parallel and two in parallel. I'm going to call this parallel combination Z4. So Z4 is 1 ohm in parallel plus 1 plus J1. So I'm going to use exactly the same expression for the parallel combination. 1 multiplying 1 plus G1, J, G1 over 1 plus 1 plus J. So this will give me here 1 plus J divided by 2 plus J. And this is of course G1. When I say J, it means G1, okay? So I'm not going to correct this one here. Now, when you divide two complex numbers, you can divide them using the, multiplying the conjugate to the denominator, 2 minus j, numerator and denominator, but I'm not going to do that. I will use the polar form. The modulus of this one is square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared, give us square root of 2. The angle is the inverse tangent of 1 divided by 1. The imaginary part here is 1, the real part is 1. The inverse tangent of 1 is pi over 4. In the denominator, again, we find the modulus. The modulus is square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared. So square root of 5, this will give you 2.23. The angle is the inverse tangent of the imaginary part, which is 1, divided by the real part, which is 2. The calculator will give you 0.4636 radian. Here I'm keeping everything in radian. This, uh, you have to be familiar, you can do it both in radian or degrees, whatever you, you feel comfortable with. But if you make this in degrees, make this one in degrees. If you make this one in radian, you make this one in radian as well. 
and this what I kept it a buy over four will give me 0.7 something uh, I subtract it I subtract the two angles so 0.7 something minus 0.4636 I got 0.3217 and of course when we divide two complex numbers we divide the modulus by the modulus and this is what you end up having so this is z4 this is the impedance z4 okay now we do the same for the impedance z5 z5 is j1 which is this one in parallel with 4 plus j2 so you apply the expression for, for, barrel, for barrel combinations so j1 multiplying 4 plus j2 over j1 plus 4 plus j2 again uh, you have to find uh, j by j will give you minus 2 so this becomes minus 2 j by 4 will give you 4j now when you combine here this one 4 plus 2j plus j will give you 4 plus 3j now when you divide two complex numbers as I said you can do it using the complex conjugate of the denominator or you can do it using the polar form I did use the, using the polar form so I found the modulus of the numerator it's square root of 4 squared plus minus 2 squared so this gave me 4.47 and then I got the angle inverse tangent of 4 over minus 2 the calculator by the way here will give you a, a negative angle which is a correct wrong which is a wrong one because the the angle that will come from the calculator directly will be in the fourth quadrant while this this complex number is in the second quadrant so I corrected that by and I added by to the phase and the correct answer is 2.034 radians I would like you to verify this one take this number and give it to the calculator you see the calculator will give you a negative angle but negative angle means you are in the fourth quadrant while this complex number is in the second quadrant so you must add by to the answer so I added 3.14 because I'm doing everything in radian and this is how I got the other one is simple because both are positive so the, the modulus of this one is square root of 16 plus 9 will give us 5 the angle is the inverse tangent over 3 over 4 this, these are both in the first quadrant, both are positive, so the answer you're going to get from your calculator is correct. It's 0.6435 radians. Now we divide the two, mod uh, two moduli and we subtract the angles, and this is what we end up having for Z5. Remember when we, now the total impedance is 6 ohm in series with Z4, in series with Z5. So I have to add all three impedances to get the total input impedance. But when you add impedances, you must convert this one to... Cartesian form or rectangular form and we must just convert this one to Cartesian form or rectangular form So how we do it? You say this is a modulus multiplying cosine this angle Plus J the modulus multiplying this angle. So I'm going to use Euler identity to convert E to the J 18.43 degrees into cosine 18.43 plus J sine 18.43 so this is the last step here um, to find the total input impedance seen by the source so from the source side I see an impedance of Z total or Z input and this Z total is 6 plus Z4 plus Z5 we combine them together uh, I call it here let me see it's called uh, 6 and 5 I have, a, I have a typo here this is Z4 plus Z5 so let me correct this one here just to be consistent with my previous notations so Z4 and Z5 um, so um, so I combined all three impedances uh, and I, I you can see I convert them convert this one and this one from their polar form to their Cartesian form so I wrote them as in real part plus G imaginary part real part plus G imaginary part when you, you sum complex numbers you collect all the real parts and you sum all the imaginary parts and this is what I did and this is the total impedance I got it is given by this one in Cartesian form now if I want to get the total the, the, the voltage across the circuit so the voltage between here and here and the same way we did for resistances the phasor of the voltage between here and here is equal to the current multiplying by the total input impedance and this is what we have here this one is 0.1J you multiply it by the input total input impedance j will multiply j will give you minus one so this becomes negative j will multiply this one and this becomes our com our imaginary part point one will reduce the order of this one by ten so this is the answer i got for my voltage and i can of course put this one in a in a in a in a polar form notice again when you give this one to the calculator the calculator will give you a wrong answer because you see the, the the angle of this 
phasor of the voltage is the, the inverse tangent of the imaginary part divided by the real part. So this will be a negative number. It's about minus 6 maybe. The calculator will tell you, okay, this is in the, in the fourth quadrant. Uh, but it, if, if, because the real part is the one that's negative is actually in the second quadrant. So the calculator gave me minus 1.41 region, but I had to add that 3.14 region. Of course, I could have done it in degrees, and in that case, I'm going to add 180 degrees. But I did it in radian, and then I convert everything to degrees. I got 99 degrees. The last thing for this example is that I drew both, um, both waveforms. I of t is equal to point one. Uh, uh, I of t is or the phasor of I it was equal to point 0.1 j. J means a phase of pi over two. So this means that you convert the you move the cosine in the negative time by pi over two. But if you move the cosine negative time by pi over two, you get a minus sign. And this is what I have here. This is why the you can see here. This is the current. It's shown in black. It is it is minus sign. Okay, now the voltage, if I convert it from its polar form to its uh, time domain, and I don't know what the frequency, by the way, the frequency is not given, and I'm going to keep it as it is, as omega. The phase is 99 degrees. When you shift a cosine by 99 degrees, it means you shift it by 99 degrees in the negative time, so it will be shifted by extra 9 degrees than the current. So it, it, the, the voltage waveform, look, it's shifted, slightly shifted, than the current. So this circuit does not really introduce much phase shift. Okay, the phase shift it introduces only 9 degrees. This is shifted by, this is a cosine shifted by 90 degrees, and this is a cosine shifted by 99 degrees. Okay, so uh, it does not really introduce much phase shift, but of course it changes the amplitude of the of the voltage, and they succeed the amplitude here. Uh, it's, a sinus, it's a sinusoidal waveform, and I'm not showing them, by the way, in the same scale. Of course, it should be given. This one is uh, has an amplitude of 0.1. This one here has an amplitude of 0.6845 volts.